everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, we're gonna be building three different sections with a empty template section that I have created. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, basically every time I make a section, I follow the same steps over and over and complete a few different prerequisite settings before I actually start adding the design. So in this video, I'm gonna create an empty section, add all my prerequisite settings, and then I'm gonna save it as an asset so I can use this on three different sections that we'll be building later in the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So here in the editor, I kind of wanted to explain a little bit better now, I know I kind of already explained this in the intro, but I kind of want to explain it a little bit further here in the editor. But here we have a very empty section. And before I even start adding design elements, there's a lot of things that I do to these sections to kind of prepare them and make them responsive and stuff like that. And this is the same process that I do for almost every single section that I make inside of the editor. So it's just one of those things like, why not go ahead and create one section with all of these presets and then save it as one of my assets so I can just simply add it to my website, right? And all of the settings and stuff that I would normally apply to every new section is already here. So by default, these sections look identical because it's white and this one's white as well. However, the difference is, is this one has containers inside of containers and this container already has a CSS grid applied. And if you don't really know what I'm talking about, when I go over to add, got a quick add and add a container. If you wanna create grids with containers, you have to come over here to advanced CSS grid and press apply. Now that's only one extra click and I understand that. However, when you're creating 50 plus new sections for every single website template or even some sections for tutorials, this can be such a monotonous, repetitive task that with a template section, I can just completely bypass with this setup with the CSS grid. So with this internal container here, this is where I typically set up the structure of my section, or I can just go ahead and immediately start adding assets or content to this section. With the background container, and you'll notice it's not the section, it's actually the container. This container basically has the padding that contains our content or section structure. And in addition, this one also has a black gradient. And some of you might be saying like, that's not too crazy. However, I like to use uh, the black gradient more than you think. And for some reason, that's not one of the default options that comes in the editor. So in my template, I have created a black gradient by default. To kind of show you why this is very useful for me, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the gradient and I'm gonna go back to this section and I'm going to add a video to the background really quickly. And I'm gonna go ahead and redesign this stack here to make it look a little bit nicer with you know white text, um, a button that looks a lot nicer and a lot smaller. And I'll go ahead and fix the responsiveness for this. So for the button, I'm just gonna set this to fixed. For the stack here, I'm gonna set a maximum uh, thing of 42 for this text. For this one here, I'm gonna set this to 16. And then for the item spacing here, I'm just gonna set this to like 12 pixels. And just for ease, I'm gonna send this to left and bottom. And as you can see, the section is looking pretty nice. However, the text is a little hard to read, so I'll just simply add a little bit of the gradient. And if I click on the gradient, I can edit the end and starting locations very easily to customize it. And honestly, that looks really nice. Now, if you've been using the editor, you would sometimes realize that some sections or most sections have a max width on it. So if I go ahead and apply the max width to this section here, you can kind of see when I expand the width of this beyond the max width, you can kind of see where the gradient section kind of clips the design and it looks a little off. So I actually use a technique where I turn off the max width. However, I apply a max width to the content part portion right here. So now, as I expand the section here, you can see the gradient is stretching just like the background image. However, 
the content of the section is sticking to the same max width as the rest of our website and looks really nice. So that is kind of the point of this empty template section that I'm going to show you how to create in today's video. And then we're going to use that to create two additional sections. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do over here with the section itself is I want to turn off the max width. The next thing I want to do is I just want to simply add a container on the inside and we're going to stretch this and we're going to come down here to CSS grid and we're just going to press apply. Will we ever use it? Maybe not, but it might come in use if we ever need it in the future. For the design, we're going to come over to background. We're going to switch over to gradient and what I'm going to do is use this first option here and I'm just going to set the color to black. And I'm gonna set this one to black as well. But for this one, I'm gonna come over here to the opacity option and set this to zero. Then I'm gonna come over here to the angle and set this to zero as well. So that way it's kind of up and down. And whenever I need to use this, I can always change this angle, change the colors, and change the ending and starting locations for this gradient as well very easily. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and close out and I'm gonna set the opacity for the gradient to zero. Again, I can turn this up and down as needed in the future. The last thing I want to do to this section in particular is I want to come down to the padding and on the sides, I like to say 5%, okay? And then for the top and bottom, I'll typically set this to 6.4 VH. Now that number is just something that's kind of a personal preference because Let's just say, for example, I'm just going to add a container in here and stretch it. And then if we grab this section and duplicate it, you know, that 6.4 typically gives us a good amount of white space in between the content from one section to the other. So that's typically why I do 6.4. But for you, you can choose whatever number makes the most sense for you. But that's typically what I like. And as you can see, it's typically around 64 to 65 pixels on most screens. But inside of this, what we're now going to add is a new container. Now for this container, I'm going to come over to layout and turn on CSS grid, like I mentioned before. And this is going to be where we add the content or create the structure for our section. But we're not going to do that for the template. But what we are going to do is come over to size and we're going to turn on the advanced settings. For the width, I'm gonna set this to 100%. And then we're gonna apply a max width of 1440. So that means as we expand the screen, that gray section that we added is never going to exceed 1440 pixels wide. And that's what we kind of did here and that's what matches here. And the reason we did that, reason we chose 1440 to kind of explain it. If we come over to our site styles and go to max width, we can see the max width is 1600 pixels. Now, when we are creating our sections, I like to choose 5% on the left and the right, as you can see here from the padding. Now, if you use different numbers for your padding, just keep this in mind and adjust accordingly. But I like to use five. So five for the left and five for the right is 10%. So basically what that means is this section takes up 100% of our section minus the 5% over here and the 5% over here. So basically the content takes up 90% of the screen. So to come up with this 1440 number, what I did was I came over here to our site styles, go to max width, we see it's 1600. So if I just do the quick math, 1600 times 90%, which is 90% of 1600, that is 1440. So that is why down here, you know, here's the, the section with max width and here's the one without it. That is why on larger screen sizes, the content lines up so perfectly. But again, if you have different padding on the left and right, just adjust yours accordingly. But now that we have this set, what I want to do is make sure that this section is centered here on desktop, what I will do is go ahead and set the row height to a pixel value. And I'll just set this to like 400. I think that's typically a good starting point to add content. And then once we design the section, we can come over here and set this to min or max content. 
but as its default state, I think this is good. And then what we're gonna do is simply just set the background color from 100% to zero. And the last thing I will mention is for tablet, typically what I will do is I will set the row height for this to max content. And I'll also go ahead and grab the padding for the section outside of it. And I'll add 64 for the tablet and I'll make it 42 for mobile. So what I'm gonna do is grab the section using the breadcrumbs, press the three dots, and right at the very bottom, there's an option for save as asset, an underscore empty section. And I like to save this to my saved assets. Now, the reason I add that underscore there is because our saved assets panel over here, if I'm not mistaken, this is sorted alphabetically. So with the underscore there, that typically throws it at the very top. So no matter what website I'm working on, I will always have the NP section available to me right away. But now that we have our section saved as an asset, now let's go ahead and build a couple more sections because we already designed this one earlier. So all I'm going to come over here and do is go to add, go to assets, save assets, grab our empty section, and I'm going to drag it underneath. Perfect. And for this one, maybe we would just want to have a very simple section. So maybe an image over here on the left and maybe some text or a stack over here on the right, something really easy. So what I'm going to do is just come over here, split this into two. In between, I might add a gap of like, let's say 64 pixels with an asterisk, fantastic. Then we'll go to quick add, add an image over here. We'll stretch it, looks great. And then let's just copy this stack here because I do like my websites to be pretty uh, consistently designed. So we'll go ahead and add this stack here and I will turn on advanced settings and turn this width to 100%. And then we'll just grab both of these options here or both of these text elements and change the fonts to black. Now this text right here, since it is the first section on the page, we should probably be choosing the heading one style and we'll go ahead and add, make it white and add that max width there. But for this, the second section here, the heading two will work just fine. And for the image, if we want to, we could even round the corners here, let's say to like 42. And we can, of course, replace the content, replace the image. And just like that, we have a very simple section. Uh, if we want to, we can go ahead and design the other breakpoints as well. I do notice that the text is growing or shrinking quite small. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the minimum for these paragraphs to be like 13. That's the smallest size I'll go on mobile. Um, but typically people like to say around 14 or 15. So you know what, we'll just stay, we'll do that. Um, so 14 or 15. And then for maybe these big texts right here, maybe this one can be like 42 and this one can be like 24. Okay. So now we can have something that looks like this and then on tablet, we'll do that. For here, it looks pretty good just like that, fantastic. Then for mobile, we might have this centered. We might turn on advanced settings for sizing, which is just clicking this three dots and turning this on. Or if you're like me and use uh, keyboard shortcuts on Mac, it's option I, which I think it is alt or option I on PC. And then we're just going to set the width to 100%. Awesome. For this one right here, let's go ahead and set this to be a one by two. And right here, I might set this to be like a 32 pixel gap in between. I like this being 200 pixels, but I might set this to be scale. Okay. And then for this bottom one, I might set this to max content. And I might also grab the stack and center it just so it's kind of on brand with this one up here. Fantastic. And now let's go back up to desktop and let's design one more section. And then for this one, maybe we'll design it a little bit differently. Like maybe we want to list out some services. So let's go ahead and maybe give this a 
one by two option here. So we have two rows. Uh, we might add like a vertical gap of like 64 pixels with an asterisk. Okay. And inside of this, what I might do is grab this text element here, paste it in, make sure it's in the top grid cell. Let's center it. Okay, then we'll grab the container itself. We'll grab the row, set this to max content. And then inside of this, I might just add like a repeater and the bottom three rows, stretch it. And for this repeater, maybe we have like 24 pixels in between each of the services that we offer. Then I might grab this stack again, paste it inside of this. And for the width, let's set this to like 80%. Well, align everything to the left. And for this item right here, actually what I'm gonna do is give us some padding of like 42 pixels for the left, top and bottom. I think that looks good. Then we'll grab this stack here and instead of setting it to 80%, we'll set it to 100. And that padding is what's making it look a little bit nicer. We'll send it to the top. We'll grab the item itself and remove the height. So we'll just grab the height, set it to zero. And maybe for the item, let's go over to corners and we'll round this to like 24. So now we have the uh, desktop basically done. Um, maybe even for this, I'll actually remove um, the button here in the paragraph text. We'll just say this one is services, just to kind of give us an example. And if we don't have all of them listed here, what we could do is actually add another row. I'm gonna grab this button here, copy it, paste it down here. And I'm gonna change the text to view all. All right. Make sure it is centered. And then we'll grab this row, set it to max content. And we'll also do that for this middle row as well. And now that we are done with the design, what we can easily do is go over to tablet. For something like this, I might make the paragraph text a little bit smaller. And if we come down to mobile, what I'll do is grab this repeater, set the number of items per row to one. Okay, well, we can center everything in here. Looks great. We'll grab the item and maybe re-add our padding. And maybe we'll also adjust the corners back to 24. And add a little bit more spacing vertically between the items. So literally within just a couple minutes, we created a really nice website layout here for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And basically by the time we had this template section already built and designed, we were able to crank through three sections within like five minutes on all breakpoints. Now, if you want to just go ahead and get started without having to build this from scratch, I will mention I do plan on offering versions of this on my website, so I will have that linked in the description below. And also, if you are a Patreon supporter or YouTube channel member, then I'm actually offering these in the Patreon and Discord server. So if you're a channel member, join the Discord. That link is in the community tab. And if you're on the Patreon, the link is in the Patreon. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you all in the next one.